free vector font hack using Adobe Illustrator. Hey guys, Kerry Hawkins here with another VectorMade.com tutorial. Today I'm going to be talking about how do you get a vector font for free. Now this is not going to be a great way to get a font if you're going to be using it over and over again, but this is a great way to get a font for like a preview that you're going to send a client. If you're not sure if they're going to go with that look, but you like the look and you want to show it to them, then this is a way to kind of use the font for a preview without having to spend the money to buy the font, because some of these fonts can be pretty expensive, right? So let's jump in. First thing you're going to do is go to www.myfonts.com and then find a font that you want to use that you can't, you don't own and you can't find for free, right? And I went ahead and found this Just Lovely font because I thought it would work out really nicely. So here's the page for Just Lovely. Let me close this real quick. And um, as you can see, it's kind of a brush script font. It has all, a lot of like uh, eroded pieces and brush strokes on the inside of it. So a lot of pieces that would have to be vectorized with um, little pointed sections and spots. So difficult to do by hand, um, would be nice to live trace something like this if you can't, if you can't. Um, this is where your preview text is going to be and it will change here. So, um, you know, I'll just show you here real quick. It, it automatically fills up to the width if you have this selected. If it's not selected, then you can only range from like 8 point to 240 points. So, um, on some monitors that might look bigger, bigger too. So I have a pretty decently large uh, monitor size. So just be aware of that. But fit to width is usually going to give you the biggest um, width that you can get. And it's often it's going to be bigger than the slider can do. So I, I tend to go for that. Let's go back to my vector made real quick. So there I am. What you'll want to do is use a browser that has um, developer tools so you can view the source code. Okay. On most of them, it's going to be hitting F12. I like to use Chrome. I know that works on Edge as well. It probably works on some of the others, but I don't use the other browsers as often. So just Google how to do that if you're if you're not familiar with how to do that on your particular web browser. But I will hit F12, and that brings up the code, the source code. And then if you hover over the uh, image after it's made a preview, ho hover over it, right click on it, and hit inspect. It should bring up the code. There it is. And there should be two source files inside of this uh, image tag here. So there's this first source file and the second one. And they look identical, but the second one is actually better. Um, so just go ahead and right click on the second one and hit open in new tab. And it should bring up this preview, which is actually larger than the one that you see here. Um, so it gets it gets downsized a little bit in the in the browser on this side. But over here is a pretty nice size. You just want to say save image, bring it in, and you can see I've already done that. I put it in a file, uh, just called it vector made, and then I went ahead and brought that into Illustrator. So just open that file, and then all you have to do is right click, um, excuse me, left click on it, come over to image trace. And I usually start out with silhouettes on these things, but as you'll see, um, you'll lose a lot of the detail on silhouettes. So what you'll want to do is come in to the image trace panel, which is here, and probably lower this. Um, if, it's, if it's black and white, you can usually go down to like 50 and you'll be and you'll be fine. I like to bump my paths up to like 90. Um, corners on this one, probably 90 or 100. Let's try 100. And then noise, you know, you might just drop that down to one. Uh, one is the lowest setting. This should give you, you know, the best um, end result on a live trace if you're just going to do that. So let's take a look at that. That's not bad, really. It looks pretty close to the original. And now I've got this vector shape um, that I can use as a logo preview or you know some sort of graphic or something like that, which is pretty cool. So that's how you do it. If you want to do it the really, really quick way, just go that way and repeat those steps and it'll work out great for you. But if you want to be a little bit more precise, and this is where I'll lose some of you, but if you want to go for a little bit more precision, then I would do it this way. Let's go back to um, the preview here. So here we are looking at uh, VectorMate again, and I'm going to back this up and just type in capital V. And then I'm going to look at it 
as you'll see, and let's close this so I can see it a little better. That V is huge now, right? Like it takes up the same width as the full word vector made did. So it's massive. So you can do the same thing, you know, open up your developer tools and then right click on it, hit inspect, and then come over here, open in new tab, and you'll see there's the V. If I want to, I can click on it to make it even bigger. It's actually that size. Do the same same, same thing, right click, save as, and you, as you can see, I've already saved out all of these uh, individual letters. And then I went ahead and brought those in to uh, Illustrator. The one thing you'll notice is that they're not all the same size. So some of these are gonna be bigger than they should be relative to the others. Um, so like the V, um, pretty good size, the M, this is capital M though, uh, same width as you'll see, but because that M is shorter, uh, as a letter, you know, proportionally to its width, then it's not going to end up being the right size. So you still need that original um, image um, with all of the letters together so that you can get the kerning correct and that you can get the size of the letters correct. But these um, bigger letters will live trace much, much better. So like there's all of this little bitty detail in the original font that a lot of it you lose at this smaller size, but you'll keep a lot of it at this bigger size. So let me just show you. This is a comparison between um, the top was using the, the higher quality letters and the bottom was just using all of them uh, on one image. And if we go in and zoom, you'll see that I kept a lot of this value, um, uh, a lot of this quality, I should say, the small details and whatnot in these higher quality images. And then down here, you'll see uh, they kind of smoothed out a little bit, right? Looks fine, looks fine. It's not like it's bad, but you'll see it's just a lot smoother. A lot of the smaller uh, holes and such did not get in there. And so if you really want that high quality look, this is the way you're going to want to go. Also, a cool thing about doing it this way is, you know, once you size them um, accordingly, then, of course, you can move things around in, on an individual basis. I don't have to have all one piece like this. Um, so that's very handy if say you want to like tighten up the kerning a little bit and of course I'd have to delete this little section here but you know just giving you an idea of what you can do with this it's not as good as owning the actual font um, outright because you could do all of that easily with the font if you purchased it but you know sometimes you're poor and you need to be able to do things in a um, simple free but still quick manner um, and I think this works out really nicely if you're just going to do a word or two or, you know, a, a simple graphic or even just like a letter or two in the background, like as a, a watermark or something like that. So anyway, let me know if you thought this was helpful, if you'll end up using this um, technique in the future. And I will see you guys in the next video. Oh, yeah. Like, subscribe, share, do all that jazz, too. Thanks.